with a conspiracy revolving around the bloodline addressed and more. This is Wrestling Rambles. My name is John and you're watching the Wrestling Report. Before we move on, make sure you subscribe to Wrestling Rambles with notifications on and don't forget to like the video. Explaining her decision to delete her account on X, Zelina Vega wrote on Instagram, also deleted Twitter for one day and already people blowing up my other pages, wanting to know the tea or spreading false narratives about randos, drama, cosplay, and whatever else. All BS. Like, how about I'm just tired of the toxicity? You never know the damage you can actually do to someone. My fans, I love you so much. Real ones only. I appreciate the love and support you've sent me. You are important. You are enough. You matter. Forget me not. During an interview for New Japan Pro Wrestling, Jack Perry said this regarding his employer, AEW. Ripping that contract was a declaration, I'm not playing by your rules anymore. If AEW were too afraid to have me anymore, if the specter of Jack Perry is too much, they don't want to deal with the conversations, the ramifications that brings, then that's fine. I don't need them. I will go by myself across the world, all by myself, without any of my friends, without any of the things I'm used to, anything that's been my life for the last five years, and I'll do it on my own make my own way loyalty is a two-way street and i show loyalty to those who are loyal to me as of now certain parties have been very good to me and i intend to repay that Touching on the booking of a WrestleMania 40 opponent in Rhea Ripley, Becky Lynch noted on the In The Click podcast, if she's a heel, she's the worst booked heel in history. If she's a babyface, she's the best booked babyface in history. But I think she's a babyface. You have to approach that as if she's a babyface. She's badass, right? She's a badass. I am also a badass. We are two very different people. She's dominant. She's the type that you go there is a superstar. Let me strike wrap a rocket to her, send her to the moon. I'm the one that has always had to overcome. I am the Rocky Balboa in this. That's the difference. Now, how do you play to the differences and how is that interesting? So you can't be thinking heel and babyface. You have to think, why do I not like this person? What is this story? How do we tell that? How do we get people invested? Giving her perspective on those in WWE that only wrestle part-time, Becky Lynch told The Mirror it's easy to be special when you only show up every four weeks or however often, and then creative is specifically designed to make you feel important. Whereas when you are on TV every week, you're on every live event, you're doing the work to make these people seem important. You were doing the grunt work to allow them to come in and say, hello, let me wave majestically at everybody. It used to be a thing that wrestling fans would scoff at but now it seems they are starting to revere it more like oh yay this person has come around and graced us with their presence so that becomes frustrating in the past the champion would make their rounds through the territories show off the title and be front and center now that model is changing and i don't know if it's for the better you learn by being in front of the crowd constantly and when you are in there with somebody who has learned by being in front of the crowd you get better so it moves the business forward. Taking to X, AJ Styles, after having an altercation outside his home with LA Knight, said this regarding an appearance this week on SmackDown. Here's the thing, Nick. I'm not going to be at SmackDown this Friday night as long as LA Knight's there. So make sure that he isn't. Mentioning the possibility of Sting returning to AEW television following his retirement match, Jeff Jarrett said on his My World podcast, Sting is a guy that I don't think we're going to see. I think he's going to be attached, 
I think licensing and action figures and video games and the brand and everything that goes with it. But as far as manager or even producing backstage or any of those type deals, I just don't think it's in his DNA. I think Sting could do exactly what Sting wants to do. As far as giving back to the industry, he was a real model as a true veteran, both on screen and off. He gave back quite a bit. So I think it's time for Sting to be dad and granddad and everything that goes with it. For more details regarding the promo segment on Raw between CM Punk, Drew McIntyre, and Seth Rollins, Dave Meltzer said this on Wrestling Observer Radio. They went a little long, but there was no negativity from it. One person told me that Levesque knew they were probably going to go long throwing those guys out there like that. So the matches that didn't have the ring entrances, they did the entrance during the commercial break. Before the show, they had already planned that that was going to be the case. So it wasn't like that they came up with that to save time. It was like they knew they were going to save time. And you know, they did rush through the DIY match was shorter and the Ivy Nile match was barely a match. And you know, but that's how it goes. And we had no real heat or anything on anybody for anything they did. And it just kind of went off. And when the rating came in, everybody was thrilled. Touching on the backstage reaction to CM Punk making a Vince McMahon reference during the segment, PW Insider reported that multiple sources indicate Punk wasn't in trouble for veering into territory that related to the now disgraced former WWE leader Vince McMahon. Instead, because of how he steered away from it adeptly after a few seconds, while still getting the impact he was looking for as a controversial comment, it was seen as a slick comment that enhanced the tone they were going for. Announcing the cancellation of one of Eric Bischoff's podcast co-host of the show, John Alba, wrote on X, Unfortunately, this week's episode of Strictly Business with Eric Bischoff will be the last edition of the podcast. Eric's schedule is loaded these days, and for good reasons, he'll be putting his efforts into other endeavors. I'm extremely grateful to have had a chance to share a platform with Eric for the past two years. We are 38 years apart and have wildly different views of pro wrestling, storytelling, and even life. Yet, I think that has been one of the most fascinating parts of our dynamic and never fails to make for engaging conversation. I've always said Eric is one of the greatest television performers in wrestling history. And doing this show has been one of the most exciting challenges of my career. He has made me a better broadcaster, helped open up new professional doors for me, and has been extremely gracious to me personally. I hope you'll join us this week as we bid farewell to the show. Thank you to the Ad Free Shows team as well for always making it featured programming, and everyone who has tuned in for the past couple of years. Hopefully we've been different than the rest. AEW President Tony Khan replied to this writing, sunsetting this fraud of a business podcast before the next AEW media deal is a wise choice. Hashtag AEW Dynamite. Bischoff then said this in response to Tony's comment, a money mark with no talent other than spending daddy's money, going all the way to Canada to draw less than 4K in one of the hottest pro wrestling markets in North America. Talking about wise choices? Strap in. It's going to be a fun day. When it comes to the TNA wrestling contract status of a former WWE star, Sean Ross Sapp of Fightful noted that Mustafa Ali is performing at sold-out show after sold-out show. However, he's not inked to a contract as of yet. Ali debuted for TNA wrestling recently and is their current X Division champion. However, we've confirmed that as of now, he's on a per-appearance basis and is not locked down to a contract of any kind. Ali has also worked with New Japan Pro Wrestling since January and has a match scheduled at Windy City Riot. In addition to working with TNA and New Japan Pro Wrestling, we've heard that other televised wrestling companies have maintained interest in possibly working with Mustafa. Revealing issues that he's been having with his health, Mick Foley would end up canceling an appearance as he wrote on Instagram. 
Very sorry to cancel. I'm really sorry to give the news that I will not be able to make it to the Squared Circle Convention in Indianapolis this weekend. I've been working through some dizziness the last couple of weeks, and my family and I feel like it would be best to cut back on my traveling until my symptoms are gone. I also will be unable to make my return to OVW Thursday as I had originally hoped. I think I may have just done way too much driving. 40 hours in 5 days not enough sleeping, and just taken one too many bookings in the month of March. I really take pride in making all my dates, and I absolutely do not want to let anyone down, but in this case, we feel like it's best for me to rest up. Addressing the fact that The Rock has held up an L with the bloodline, which has led to speculation that this is a sign that Rock will turn on Roman Reigns. Paul Heyman said this about it to Forbes. I don't know, and it's something that certainly my suggestion would be that's a great question to ask The Rock, and I'm sure he'd be happy to answer it, but it is a conspiracy. And just because it's a conspiracy theory doesn't mean there's not a conspiracy behind it. So my father always taught me, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean the whole world's not against you. So I'm sure there's something to it. And my suggestion would be ask the final boss, ask The Rock. Taking to X, Andrade posted a clip of him working out as he wrote, The doctor told me that maybe I wouldn't have the same strength at 100%, but doctor, trainers, and dedication make it possible. I'm sorry I forgot my beautiful wife. She pushed me at the gym. Revealing Triple H's reaction to his initial interest in WWE, Logan Paul told Graham Bensinger, Yeah, I heard Triple H laughed when he heard I was interested in WWE. He told me to my face. I'm sure he thought, there's no way this internet kid can hang with the toughness and complex nature of this sport. As he recently was in the hospital to remove ports from his chest, AEW commentator Jim Ross said this in an update on his Grilling JR podcast. I got my ports out yesterday. I had three of them right in this area. He points to his upper chest. I'm sure glad to get those things out. They're just hanging out on my chest. I've been off my antibiotics intravenous. That was the difference maker for me. I'm glad I did it and I'm glad that we finally got the damn ports out. I got two or three days just to leave it alone and let it heal. I said this on Twitter one day this week that it's another step on the road to healing. So that's where we are. I'm sore today, but I don't have to screw with it anymore. So slowly but surely, I'm getting better. As a matter of fact, I think on Monday, I go back to the surgeon who finally has responded to my messages to evaluate my hip and tell me what he sees. I should have had that information a month ago but in any event that's a medical update bottom line i'm feeling pretty good i'm still targeting st louis aew dynasty i sure hope that works out i would do just about anything to call brian danielson and will osprey if it's not the match of the year if it doesn't get five stars i'll be surprised When it comes to the TNA wrestling status of a former WWE star, Ringside News wrote that according to Sean Ross Sapp behind Fightful's paywall, AJ Francis has secured a new contract with TNA, extending his tenure throughout 2024. Impressions of Francis have been positive since his arrival, particularly following his introduction by ECW slash TNA legend Tommy Dreamer. Under the terms of the contract, Francis retains the ability to work with NJPW, NWA, and MLW while abstaining from involvement with WWE or AEW. Recalling his tweet about CM Punk's return to AEW Collision, where he called the star the softest man alive, Ryan Nemeth had this to say about it, telling Sportskeeda, There are some things I can talk about and some things I can't talk about. I can very happily tell you about my tweet. The top good guy on the TV show was missing for eight months due to what I was told was a triceps injury, right? On his very first night back, he, in character, called someone else soft. 
I thought, well, I'm a heel. This is a baby face. We both work for the same wrestling company. He gets injured more than anyone who has ever wrestled. And on his very first night back in character, called someone else soft. I thought, what else am I supposed to do? Of course, I must respond to this in character, and I did. Anything beyond that, I'm probably not safely able to talk about at this time. I think that's a very reasonable thing for a bad guy heel to say in response to a heroic babyface who seemed to be a little hypocritical. Is that fair? Going over the difference in reactions to pro wrestling seen from those attending live and those posting on social media, Sami Zayn said this on Habs Lunch. You'll notice that the live house, including on television and not just television, but when you go town to town, to me, that's where my bread is buttered. Those are the people I cater to. It's not always 100% in line with the slightly more fickle or opinionated voices that you're going to hear on social media. Social media's whole function is voice your opinion. One must construct an opinion. In doing so, it's inherently meant to be contrarian or controversial or whatever. You're meant to be opinionated, whereas when you're watching a live show or on television, you're meant to consume it. I cater to consumption. I'm the entertainer, I'm the performer, and the viewer is the consumer of that performance. Afterwards, online is the opinionated aspect of it. To me, the real truth is in the live reaction. For example, in my storyline with Gunter, because it was an interesting storyline where there was another good guy in competition for that match in Chad Gable. The online reaction was a little surprising of oh man we really want to see chad gable which is true and he does get great responses but arena to arena you're not getting negative backlash they're excited to see what they're going to see there is zero doubt in my mind that when i'm in the ring with gunter at wrestlemania they're going to be behind me excited to watch that match and be along for the ride at the end of the day i'm not one of these people that discount social media i think there is a lot of validity to listening to that audience to an extent i don't think it's necessary the hill you want to die on. I think the more honest reaction and what you truly need to judge by is the reaction in the arena night in and night out. That's where the real truth is. I'm not poo-pooing the internet or social media. I think it's very important and should be respected. But when it comes down to it, how are the people in the seats in the arena, how are they reacting? I think that's the most important thing. Speaking about the possibility of making a return to WWE in a non-wrestling role, former star for the company, Maven told Chris Van Vliet, I can honestly say because people ask me, I haven't gotten one call. If I get the call, I'm obviously going to listen to an opportunity that comes my way. I don't care what the opportunity is. I'm going to listen to it, but no, I haven't heard anything from them. Would I love to go back? Because in one of my videos, I talked about how in 2020, I went and had an interview with them to do just that, and it just didn't pan out because of COVID. I would love to have that opportunity again, but I'm also 47. If it doesn't happen, I'm not going to sit and twiddle my thumbs and hope I'm going to keep moving. I learned a long time ago in life, there's a couple of key things about life, and that is you got to keep moving no matter if it's good or bad. Keep plugging, keep moving, put one foot in front of the other, and just keep charging. If I sit and wait for a call from WWE that might not come, then I'm opening myself up to let myself down, and I refuse to do that. If you would have told me a year ago that you're going to be a YouTuber, I would have laughed in your face. But look where we're at now. So if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, then other things will present itself, I'm sure. For an AEW status update on MJF, who has not been seen on programming this year, PW Insider said MJF is still working to recover from his multiple injuries. While he is not listed on the AEW roster, the belief is he remains locked into a deal with the company. The day after AEW Big Business, MJF was in Boston to meet with AEW officials. There is no word when he will be returning to the ring. With it having been rumored that he would be involved at WrestleMania 40 weekend, Hulk Hogan posted this clip to X. Yes, I'm all pumped up, Jack, for this WrestleMania coming up, dude. You know, there's just so much confusion. I figured I'd finally lay out some straight talk and straighten it out for all you maniacs. 
two days of WrestleMania. Everybody's all confused. Bloodline line, no bloodline, no rock. Yes, there's gonna be a rock. Nobody knows what's going on. The rock has a place flipped upside down for this WrestleMania. But now we know what the real main event's gonna be. It's Hulk Hogan and all his Hulkamaniacs at the Pennsylvania Convention Center, April the 7th, brother. That energy's gonna take over Philly, brother. Everybody's gonna know that we're there tearing the place down. April 7th, Pennsylvania Convention Center. What you gonna do when Hulk Hogan, fanatics, and the WWE runs wild all over you? While former head of talent relations of WWE John Laurinaitis has been named in the sex trafficking lawsuit against WWE and Vince McMahon, he has now been accused of racism by a WWE Hall of Famer, as Teddy Long said this about him to the wrestling time machine. Like I said, I don't hold back my tongue back on Laurinaitis. One of the worst pieces of sh on this planet. They can do whatever they want to do. You sue me all you want to, then you're gonna get holla holla holla. So that's all I can tell you, man. Like I said, I'm not gonna bring them through with this. But here's a man that's gonna stop me from making a living because of the color of my skin, not because I was not doing my job. So you're gonna tell me I did my job on the face of that TV for nine years. You know what I'm saying? Let me stop. And this was your pro wrestling news update. I hope you're all having a great day. Thank you so much for watching and I will see y'all later.